Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So welcome to part two of my review series of a really cool lithium battery, 300 amp hour lithium battery from a company called SFK out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, if you missed part one where I kind of did an introduction of the battery and went through some of its features, I'll link back to that. In this part two, I'm going to go through their app because they have quite a, an amazing app as far as features. It's very full features featured and so far it's been working really well, has good range and everything. So I'm just going to walk you through all the features and then we're going to do a capacity test with the battery to, to see it's a uh, full capacity and that's actually built right into the app. You can do the test right through the app. So here's the home page of it. You've got state of charge up here. It says 99.24% full. You've got remaining amp hours, 297. Cycle count, how many times it's had a full charge discharge. <clears throat> and then we got where it says charge discharge and then the battery, you can see it's active. We have voltage amperage and wattage and then there's three temperature readings one looks like there's a little diagram there that's the bms board battery management system board and then there's two different sensors in the battery probably one is a high temperature sensor and one is a low temperature sensor but it's nice it all reads out on the app <clears throat> and then if there's any bms alerts it'll show up here right now conditioned as normal <clears throat> we'll just go into details here And it's just sort of a different display. It gives you a graphical display of things. Just go to volts. It shows you the volts on a graphical display. And then down here, it's showing you each cell voltage. So there's four big prismatic type cells in there, showing 3.33 volts on each. It's good when they're all right around the same voltage. That means the battery is nicely balanced. And then we go into tools, and it's got to contact the through Bluetooth and get the readings. So you can make a, a nickname for your battery. I'm using mine in my truck toolbox power station, so I just called it that. It's only really handy if you have multiple of these batteries, then you can have different names for them. Here you can, battery output, you can disable charging or discharging if you wanted to. So you're going to kind of turn off the battery if you're working on it, that's kind of handy. Uh, fault release manual or automatic automatic so if there's a problem with the battery if you're on automatic mode it would just kind of reboot itself where I just left it in manual mode because it's not really mission critical or anything temperature settings Celsius or Fahrenheit and then we got some um, below freezing settings because this battery has heating pads in it so you can click the button for low temperature to discharging below freezing and then low temperature heating for the charging. Um, the heater will come on at a certain uh, certain Fahrenheit uh, setting and you can adjust that from 35 up to 50. Then we have SOC settings, so state of charge. So this is normal, but if you're gonna put your battery into storage, you can hit storage and then discharge it and recharge it and it'll, it'll sit at a rate that is optimal for storing the battery for long periods of time and then if you have to send it away for service there's also a service setting and you can adjust the low voltage cutoff for the battery from looks like from 10 volts to 12 charge discharge settings so this is kind of cool you can set what you'd like the maximum charge amps to be and maximum discharge amps capacity settings if for some reason the capacity sort of got out of whack you could go in and reset that pin code access is uh you can set so not, right now anybody with an app can connect to your battery so this is a way to enable a pin so that it's kind of a little more security so people can't come in and mess around with your battery and pull request i guess that's how many times the bluetooth is updating or something like that connection re-establish attempts so that's probably the bluetooth settings as well then we'll just go past benchmark here to show you logs so it tells you you know things that have happened to the battery over time 
So let's go back here. This is the cool thing, benchmark. So this is what I'm going to do today. I can go in there and and set a, a discharge rate and we can begin a, a benchmark test and you can actually, it'll come and, and give you a file and you can actually upload that to their website. So let's go out and set up that test. We'll see how it performs. First, I'm going to charge the battery fully. So here we go. There's the battery. I've got it all set up in a little truck box test station I use, kind of a test bed for things. And I'm just charging it up right now. I'm going to get it fully charged so all the cells are, are full before we start the discharge capacity test. Let's give you a look at this uh, system I have. It, it's constantly evolving. Right now I put in this uh, IntelliPol or charger. Now this thing has a boost mode so I can manually make it put out 14.4 volts and it's like a 60 amp charger. So with that I should get a, a nice full charge on that. I also have a solar controller in there, 40 amp solar controller. And there's a 1500 watt um, pure sine wave inverter. So that's going to be what I'm going to use in my discharge test. And we also have a 40 amp DC to DC charger. Anyway, once we get this battery up to full charge, I've got a little heater here, and that heater has a 600 watt setting. So that should probably pull maybe, I don't know, 45, 50 amps out of the battery at around 500 and something watts. This, this, uh, this, uh, inverter I think only outputs uh, 115 volts I think so it won't be quite 600 watts but it should be enough of a, an amperage to give this thing a, a good capacity test. So we'll just wait for that to finish charging fully then we'll start the test. I'll show you in the app how I do that. Okay so we're up 14.36 volts basically stopped taking current. Cells are all around this one's 3.55, 3.57, 3.6, 3 3.6. So we're just going to go to benchmark, discharge test, begin. <clears throat> benchmark requires a fully charged battery where each cell is 3.4 volts or higher. Okay, BMS must have the low voltage cutoff set to 10 volts. Okay, it will take approximately 5 to 7 hours to complete. The test will end if watts exceed 1200. So we'll proceed. Test has started. Please turn on load. Okay. Turn on this little heater. There's my load right now 40.87. So just over 40 amps, 560 something watts. It's got a timer going. We've got the temp here. State of charge. So we'll just let that go and I'll heat up the outside. Well it's been several hours so I check on the progress. I just have a blanket shading things. When the sun comes out it doesn't get too hot in there. Anyway we're looking at about 44.4 amps drawn. We're at 179 amp hours so far and 2,337 watt hours. The BMS temp is at 87, case temp is at 81. So everything looks like it's going pretty good. Outside temps are right around mid 70s right now with sun and cloud. We'll keep her going. Well, getting down to the nitty gritty here. So far we've used 295 amp hours. As far as watt hours go, 3,817. Voltage has dropped 12.14, starting to drop pretty fast now. BMS temperature 90.59, case temperature 84.29. And we've been running six hours and 29 minutes. Not sure if we're going to make it to uh, 
300 amp hours before the voltage drops far enough that my uh, inverter might shut down. In that case, I might have to lower the load. I can put this in just fan mode and let it go at a lower amperage so that we can eke out the max. Okay, getting really close. 298. Voltage is down to 11.8. Still pulling almost 50 amps right now. 299. See if she'll keep going before my uh, inverter goes into a low voltage shutdown. There we go. 300 amp hours. So I'm going to take the load off now. We got down to 11.6 volts. Now you can see the load's much different, so voltage will come back up. Okay, so I'll call that a success. Before they shipped the battery, they did a test with their specialized equipment for testing the, the lithium batteries. And they uh, got, I think, up to like 4,000 watt hours here and, and many more amp hours. And I could do that too if I wanted to run the battery down to say like 10.5 volts, you know, totally exhausted. But I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to see that it, they could do in the real world, you know, pulling a, a pretty good load that it would go to 300 amp hours, which it did. Okay, so here's my benchmark file. Test submitted successfully. Okay, so we'll go on the computer and go to the website and uh, we'll see what, what we got. Here we go, we're on the SFK website. Um, a link appeared on my phone. Just went to it on my laptop and we can have all the test results right here. Let's see benchmark test details right along down here. Let me scroll down, we can get a, a curved voltage discharge curve. We got amps, watts, temps, BMS temperature, case temperature, average BMS, average case. A little bit of a weirdness here, and uh, well, that's because I forgot. To disconnect my solar panel when I started the test and there was a little bit of a slight bit of amperage coming in from the even though it was tipped straight up it was pulling in a bit so I didn't see that until I saw this test there and then down here we have results for each cell so that's kind of cool because you can go in and uh you know, after you've had the battery for a, a couple of years or something, go in and do a test and, and see how all the cells are doing in comparison with each other. They all look uh, pretty even to me. Cell volts, amps, watts. So yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, I'll have some more videos on this battery going forward. I plan to do some charging tests and also a test of its uh, self-heating system. And uh, maybe at some point we'll uh, take it apart and see the build quality, etc. Until next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Cheers, guys.